Yeah, so this is a Yam Ram one. Lam, there's always a like talking about the like fire, air, space. I would like to, to know um, how each of the syllables, which, which element they're connected with. E, wind, yam, fire, okay, M, water, lamb, earth. What's the next one? And the so, my writing, and the last one, space. Okay, but what is the last one? I can't read my writing. <laughs> Uh, sum, sum. Can you repeat? Sum, yeah. Can you repeat? Okay. So ram, ram is water. No, it's fire. Yam, it's yam is fire, right? Yes. No, no. Yam is the uh, yam is the uh, wind. <laughs> e is wind. That's what I wrote down this morning. E is space. Yeah. No, explain this morning like one by one. Okay. Well, I, I must have been on a different planet because. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I just said, fire, yeah. man. I, just, I couldn't keep up. So, E is space, A is space. A is a space. E is yeah. space. Yam is what? Fire. Fire. No, no, Yam is a uh, wing. Huh? Yam is wind. Okay. <laughs> Ram is a fire. Ram is fire. Yes. Okay. And Lam. I don't know. Lam is a maybe earth. fire. This one we left. Must be earth. Earth is a soul, I think. <laughs> okay, then so Lam is space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought E was space. Yeah. It is a space, yeah, space. I mean, uh, water, water, sorry. Lam is water then. Yeah. And it's, so that would be blue color, right? So here they didn't talk about anything, color, just okay. this letter, like associated with the fire element. Okay. So, uh, those are like sometimes like not really exactly same follow that you were saying like sometimes it's kind of a different symbol so i don't know okay yeah i just i don't want to try to purify the wrong element with the wrong light <laughs> wing is like wing fire space that purify okay Element purifying, element, fire element purifying. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm not sure I remember all that. <laughs> Too dumb. Okay, so then who has a question? Yeah, Kempo, can I ask you? to clarify the concept of uh, collective karma. Mm. Um, is it that we share the same karma of the actions of the other person, or is it that we share the perception of the realm we're in? Like we, we all share. The, share. The, we share the all same perception. Okay. 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 Yeah. So it's not like I share Marilyn's karma. It's I share. I have my own karma, but we share the same perception. Yes. Thank you. We have the same perception in this world. Whatever we see, same perception. So when we are in the generation stage and we create a pure land, then we have access to the perception of the beings that, uh, that live in the pure realm, in a pure land realm. Yes. That's what we're creating, that perception. Can you say again, what did you say? So when we, when we in the generation stage, create yes. the environment and the palace, what we're creating yes. the perception of that in order to share that realm. 
No, so we the share, we create a pure perception. We create pure perception. Okay. Yeah. And then in that realm, in the pure land realm, there are other beings with which we share those perceptions that no then we we when we reborn to pure land then they all is like same same perception sharing okay okay yeah okay. yeah 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 same perception become okay. so we have a uh, impure perceptions so like no it's a, we are reborn human beings so like we sharing same perception that is uh, like this uh, this universe is also actually collective karma beings arise yeah and uh, so now we sharing mm -hmm. same perception so the box the sharing that that same perception they have their own perception so like no same is us so right. maybe fish has a different perception for them because they're sharing same perception they created their their impure perception too okay so no that means like this whatever appearance is not really exist we we create our own perceptions. No, we can create this pure link too. We can create a pure perception too. We can purify in pure perception, create a pure perception. Because it's it's the, the concept of or the idea of the of the notion of of mind creating worlds is quite astounding. It's it's incredible. You know, yeah, it's, mind it's, created, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Campo, when when yes. I asked the question about merit last week, um, I got a bit confused because I was contemplating it and I what's the difference between merit and karma because isn't merit happen like isn't it a, isn't it karma the somewhere is very similar somewhere is like different karma is usually talk about uh, bad good everything what happening have a cause they have a cause mm -hmm. So merit is like mostly like this word is for use for positive, you know, good karma. And uh, you have something create a good one. So that's, that's the reason you, you does everything like this naturally success for good happening is, is that you have enough merit. And, and you only... So that's a, that's like, Karma and merit, that's, that's we cannot show physically. So it's harder to your thinking about your thoughts, like bring your mind, like, you know. It's uh, merit is like whatever you do something, we don't see anything, but some people like really successful, good happening, it's have a merit. Especially the, when they do the, when they do the, the positive things, like conditions arise for everything naturally and less obstacles conditions good so that is a merit karma is like we reborn into to human beings and you know we like create a cause so the result is happening like that is the core kind of like karma is more talk about cause and the result other is like merit is kind of more conditions okay so but we only get merit from Dharma activities? No. Well, that's where I was confused last last time. What did I say the last time? Well, it my understanding, but I could be wrong because I obviously get things mixed up, was that if we did good deeds outside of our formal our Dharma practice, maybe even before we became practitioners that that was good good karma but not necessarily good merit that what i understood was we had to actually do it with dharma activities knowing their dharma activities but that that was what i understood 
Uh, I don't remember what we talked the last way. <laughs> no, so we went to totally different thinking. Okay, but... well, the question, okay, so it, let's say yeah, you, no. you do a lot of really good things to benefit other people with pure intent. So you're... There has a good karma, there has a good merit to do both, I think, create both. Oh, okay, okay. Because so I don't know how to make it like separate, like, you know, they just have a different names, so kind of a someone, some merit is like create a condition, good ones, you know, good condition wrapping. And uh, karma is like just cause, kind of. Actually, some ways are like very similar name, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that, that helps, thank you. Okay, sure. thank you. It's, it's harder to give it that answer, it's like really, it's dependent different situations we can think about what kind of like merit or karma or like really similar, you know, looks like that draw goes. They're just merit is good karma is very similar. The karma is like you can have negative karma, good karma, natural karma. So merit means like we don't talk about like no good ones, right? Positive or. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that was a question for me too concerning the merit because I, I had caught a little bit of that answer when you mentioned that, and I understood too, that merit was more related to Dharma activities instead of um, virtuous, or, you know, doing, you know, kind activities. So I think my question is then we want the accumulation of merit because that's going to actually help progress us along the path. But how do we accumulate that merit? Is that through just, is that through what was discussed? Like the four, you know, the different aspects of accumulating merit? Or is that also through our actions in our daily activities, unrelated to formal, you know, for pra practicing? Does that make sense? Uh, no good. <laughs> Sorry about it. So, <laughs> just uh, Mary, it's like think about we think about six parameters, six parameters. Mm -hmm. So then, when you do generosity, morality, or it's called merit, positive things, or it's like activities called merit. So, generosity, morality, patience is called accumulation, merit. We don't talk about that karma, but using words is a merit, you know. So merit is more spiritual words, I think. Karma is more less like kind of just generally like regular people. What you saying, you know, ordinary people. We say karma, but go to practicing dharma is used for words is a merit. Then Could you? accumulation, merit is generosity, morality, patience, wisdom is like meditation, and wisdom is accumulation with wisdom merit. So then think that, you know, it's no hard. Could you say that Then what are you doing? Is... You're doing, you're doing like generosity, it's, it's created merit, yeah? But yeah. is that? But then, Mary, by karma. Huh? Kempo, by karma. Kempo, but then Marilyn was correct that is in a is a merit is only in the in the spiritual sense of, of things we do, uh, you know, related to the religion, to the Buddhism, to the uh, precepts of Buddhism. You know, or, or or we gain merit for any kind of, okay, uh, of so good which, action. Which is uh, like, which is uh, like you think about which is Buddhism and which is not Buddhism. Like you have to make first where you're going to make boundaries. <laughs> so, okay. So, See? so really, our entire so life is practice, right? The, for, Buddhist, for example, meditation. Then, of course, Janara, Janara meditation. is like everyone do Janarasti, even like you are not spiritual people does Janarasti. Yes. So then you, you are even people that no Buddhist they do generosity. So then even the person is no spiritual but they do generosity. Mm -hmm. So that generosity is merit. 
but not accumulation with no merit, just merit. Two accumulations we talk about. <laughs> okay. So is, yeah. is a merit then is the is the points we get <laughs> for kind good of, karma, yeah. for good actions. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Then generosity can be uh, accumulation, merry and accumulation, merry with wisdom, you know both. Some practitioners like use the wisdom given generosity, then that is like both accumulation merit there. And who don't know the Dharma, then that is only accumulation merit, but not just the accumulation wisdom merit there. Not as powerful, you mean? It's, it's called wisdom, it's different, like you have to realize that you're saying that you're saying the wisdom emptiness. Emptiness, we have to use emptiness realization. When you're giving things, you know, subject, object, action is recognized, no exist. No expectations. So that is called wisdom generosity. So you have like expectation giving things is called accumulation merit generosity, but not wisdom generosity. Kempo, I have a question for you. So here it says, I'm reading from the book. Mm. For the first stage, what is being purified is the formation of the world where sentient beings are born. First, we start with the element of space and with the mind, which is the principal cause of the formation of the world. So, you say here that we have to purify. How do we purify? What do we purify? What do we have to look for as we purify? Are we... Uh, understanding that everything is empty? Are we uh, getting rid of self-clinging or what, what, how do we purify? What, what is the process of the purification? So which is, you're talking about where? Page 88. Mm. In the generation stage, the, the purification yes. of the environment. Mm. Okay. And then it says you start with the element of space. And I assume that when you purify the element of space, then you have to move on to purifying the earth and the wind and the fire and purify all the elements. Um, yes. But what is the purification? What, what are you, what are, what are, do you, how do you recognize the purification or what is the process of the purification? I mean, uh, if I sit down and meditate and I say, okay, I want to purify space. And I... So just purify in this space is like from which it should, it should like this purify the five elements, right? Conceptual grasping at the five elements. Do you see that? What page? What page is that? So yeah, no, I understand that you purify the five elements. What, what is the purification? What do I purify of? What, what, what am I, what is, some, what is what I have to purify? Is my perception of, let's say, space as something inherently existent? Is that what I'm purifying in order to understand it as empty? Is that what I'm working on? Is that complicated? Can somebody help me if anybody understands? <laughs> I think I, I think, think we lost Kevin. We, we lost Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too much for him. He's he's he giving you that. a big. <laughs> Where are you, Kempo? <laughs> he's just cleaning <laughs> emptiness. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, gave you an example of purification. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, 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 what I what I think it is, or what I 
what I think it is is just the process of even, of of uh, setting up the the visualization is the purification process. So just by the mere fact of 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 generating the deity, the purification happens. I think that's, so. that's my okay, understanding. We, we have to do it this way. Okay, purification means. Can you hear? Yeah, yeah, we can. We can. Yes, Thank yes. You for back. Okay. So we are the attached to in this universe we already told you this morning right we are attached to this universe so then with element like all these syllables visualize and like that is this like that is become clear and transform these elements transform uh, so should have uh, you know this uh, like that is this pure five five element and the conceptual grasping at the five elements, then become this five element is helps transform, you know. Uh, so first like purify our grasping, conceptual grasping, we purify our conceptual grasping at the five elements. Then here you should have the yogi confidence, means like you have confidence and like uh, certainty, you know, certainty of the union of the basic ground and the result. Remember that in it, the pure state of the five elements is the five female Buddhas of the five families. So this all element is arise to the five females. Visualize that. So that is it's a transform. This impure element is become transformed into the five female buddhas so you need to confident in that and also you we can do like this uh, even you don't use these syllables ram yang kam easy way easy way is just like visualize all this is become emptiness and then become right away transformed to the Buddha Amitabha pure lane. So that's visualized. Usually when we share the Dharma teaching and uh, share the Dharma teaching beginning, so we always have to change our mindset, perception. Uh, the, uh, in Tibetan like, tradition, we came also when shared the Dharma, always to, like reminded that, you know, change perception. So change of perception is the place is transformed, visualized, pure lane, where we are right now, this is a transformed to the pure lane. And the whole listening teaching is like Buddha Amitabha's retinue, whose teaching is visualized Buddha Amitabha, the Dharma is Mahayana teaching. So kind of like that, you know, you, we have to change perception. So that is that is the practice of meditation. Okay. And this one is a little bit more more Vajrayana tradition, like transform to the like make five female Buddhas. It's a more deeper level. Like think about we have a Pardo teaching, the all element arise is female Buddhas. Like we we meditated that we we shared that a lot. The five aggregates is arise five Buddhas. All this element is recognized, you know, element, when elements like, you know, fractioning or element, this is, uh, we recognize like, you know, is the female Buddhas. So we already told that in the Pardo teaching, like same thing here. So, uh, it's okay. Can you hear? Yeah. 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 Mm. So, some, so some. then everything is related to to the bardo in order for yeah. Yeah. To so of course the same. Like bardo in the this right now is the same actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Jigdin Songo says that ten dada sama bardo som chide to ban namjo means like this life bardo future is uh, recognized the same. He said, I'm yogi of realization. I realize in this life, pardo and the future life is same. Okay. So, 
you know, that's the reason in the Bardo, like we say, that's the kind of like element is when it arise, recognize five female Buddhas. So here is, a, we, we practice that meditating. You know, this uh, syllables transformed like water, earth, or, or they transform into the female Buddhas. Five female Buddhas transform into the five female Buddhas elements. Is. So that's why you, here you should have the yogi confidence of the union of a basic grown and the result. Yeah. Uh, grown result is already we talked. Grown is just right now what we actually, our perceptions are in pure. Result is pure perceptions. Like it's the same, no difference. I have to recognize that it's the same. Yeah. Uh, Kempo. Thank you, Kempo. I have a question. Yes. When you said that we are already Buddha, we are already that we are no different from Buddha, then where is the impurity come from? Why do I have impurity if I am already Buddha? Where this uh, impurity come from? Impurity. If I am already if I am already Buddha, if I don't have to go to pure land, because I am the Buddha, so my land is pure. So where is this impurity come from? Oh, where is you know what I'm asking? From? Yeah, where is the impurity come from? If we are Buddha, we are already pure. We are, we are already per perfect. So where is this uh, impurity karma come from? Because if we are already Buddha, why we have this impurity? We have one grown two path, two two path. We went to the wrong path, so that's why it's some select path, and uh, you know that's why we have to purify. So if we the are one grown, why we all went to the... to Buddha? Okay. One grown means like yes. all being to Buddha, but the two yes. part means like you have to go two part. It's like you have to yeah, right direction. Or, yeah. So, but why if we are pure, why did we go to the one part? Why did we go to the samsara part? I don't understand. If we because are delusion, pure, delusion, we... delusion, Buddha, and the dualistic why do we have thoughts. Delusion? Dula stake thoughts. We didn't recognize the dula stake thoughts arise. We didn't recognize. But if we are Buddha, <laughs> how can we so, have dula stake thoughts? We are already perfect, isn't it? If we are Buddha. So we are Buddha, but we have to clean up. Sun is the sun is under the clouds. Until clothes go where signs you cannot see. So actually, sign is there, always there. Sign is there. Same like that. We are already Buddha. The ground is always good, but obscurations we don't recognize. So that's why we have to purify it. Sir, so what I don't understand is where is impurity come from? If we all are Buddha, why we have impurity? If we are all perfect, why this sudden we become dirty? <laughs> so because of ignorance. Yes. But if, if we are Buddha, Buddha means the one who awake, who's enlightened. How can we have ignorance? We are, we we are, are grown, Buddha, we grown the Buddha, but no result to Buddha. We are, we are nature, we have all been the nature of a Buddha, but we are not purified Buddha, means like recognize the realization of Buddha. You know, in Christianity, so, you have eyes. In Christian, they said that eyes, okay, because eyes, the eyes, why is eyes, water is become eyes, why is water is become eyes, so, why is it no water? Why is ice? It's, it must be water because it's water. Why is it become ice? Because the condition so then what are your, is because due to conditions, cold conditions 
Okay, so that is the conditions, you know, ignorance, emotions, conditions we are create regular beings. So now we have to, to that's why this negative condition is purified. Okay, so eyes is all is water, right? So yes. then you you can debate why is eyes water is eyes? Why is water is eyes? <laughs> you must be water. Why are you going to wear eyes? So then what are you going to say? It's, it's a condition become eyes. So then so, why so is it that? Because it's nature, you know, this is called nature, like the, the, the relative truth, the relative truth, the reality. So, so uh, then that, Kimball, you know, like, so if any, I become a Buddha, huh? now I'm purified, I become Buddha, and I will, will have to be enlightenment and become Buddha. Will I become impure again? Will I become ice again? Is the condition why? Will I then you, yes, the you're not going back to ice again. <laughs> you have become water, you uh, cannot go back to ice again. So that's uh, the, that's, uh, that's exactly in the, in the, the Buddhist philosophy and the logic book has debating with no Buddhists and Buddhists. So the no Buddhists is like not possible to immeasurable love. Not possible to like you know enlightened. If you are enlightened, like same as the you can create hot water. So hot water then limited. One day come go back to cold dawn again. So you measurable law patient is not possible one day you create that but one day you go back to again reality so that kind of there uh, they have a, like debating law about to talk about in the logic book buddhist logic book and then uh, that's everything is like you know um, what is it the the this, they're just like who debate the buddhist philosophers that's everything has to like limited no possible unlimited, you know, like even you jump, whatever you can jump is limited. You cannot jump like immeasurably or something. So like that, that, that use that logic debated. And uh, what is the, the Buddhist answer is the no same. My nature is going back to reality. You know, the, the, the mind nature has like capacity, like all this uh, unmeasurable love, unmeasurable compassion, this all the, the, you know, that is all nature of reality, mind capacity. If you get that nature, you don't have to go back. The, the example, the water is become hard, it's go back to cold. That example is incorrect. So there, just uh, you remind me like that logic, you know, what you answer ask questions but i really don't remember all the details that is a long long time ago i studied it really long long time ago 20 years ago so i it's gone my mind what i just remember a little bit that kind of do you know the debating but in reality what to do is able to go back to the eye so the buddha is different from not Buddha and Buddha, isn't it? Because you said that when you become Buddha, you will not go back. You will be Buddha perfect forever. Yes, purification Buddha. Not talking about the natural Buddha. We have a natural Buddha. We are not purified Buddha. Okay, so that's a truth you have to recognize. Don't come to that. All sentient beings, Buddha means all beings has Buddha nature, natural Buddha not purify buddha purify buddha is all buddha shakyamuni so who has already enlightened beings that is the purify buddha okay thank you yeah you're welcome yeah i have i have a question yeah yes, the fundamental question is is okay we're in the human realm we're in, and we're experience where karma ripens. Now my question is, is karma purified as karma ripens? Uh, 
can you say again purified karma is karma wrapping means okay Kar karma ripens uh, based yes. on causes and conditions right that, yes okay now as as the karma as you experience the karma ripening is is it also purified at the same time uh actually kind of like depending you know so which kind of like you know that's like really general question so it cannot give a really specific answer think about it. if i'm sick is i have due to something i'm sick so i recognize okay my sake is due to my previous life karma i think oh i'm purifying my karma and then i just think about this is represent being so like representative of the who created sickness karma i wanted to be representative of all these beings i do something mind generate using you know something like positive thinking and then purify uh, also uh, no, endless karma you know lots of karma purifying together wrapping in karma same time you purify lots of karma together so otherwise like you know you just wrap in and karma is karma is purifying just wrap in and karma okay the, re the reason so I some, is the a, some karma is a, some karma is before wrapping and you can purify before karma is wrapping and you can purify make sense or no uh, not uh, i'm not uh not yet mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so okay so here, here's 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 why i asked the question okay uh, i'm saying why why was it i was introduced to buddhism after i was 40 years old i'm saying why why was it why did did i did i uh did i reach a did i do something correct to reach that point to where it was introduced to me uh, and uh, the answer I come up with in my mind is I must have purified mm. karma somehow <laughs> to reach okay. that point. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Sir. So, so that's why I asked the question. Of, apparently, it appears that so, karma, when it ripens, a, it's purified at the same time. That's a really, I don't know, the only Buddha maybe can give an answer. Why is it that? So other like really hard to give why is happening like that is the follow with your situation. So I cannot like give you the answers like you know like details what happening like, because I, I if I give answers like I need to clear you know I have to recognize what happened your connections all private life connections I have to recognize then I can give you answer. Otherwise I cannot give you that. So definitely I can say like you have some positive karmic imprint like something create your positive karmic imprint previous life that's why connecting with the dharma so then i cannot say why it's in the 40 years after <laughs> so that's someone who has clear warnings they can give answers okay thank you yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so then next uh, questions we we're debating okay tonight debating with the answer questions so kempo when we yes. like we're supposed to visualize the palace and all that that but if we see the world as a buddha field or aspire to see the world as a buddha field and everyone in it do we really have to do the visualization of a palace uh you know when they have the those um illustrations and things like that well of course you are, if we follow the generation stage we have to visualize we have to visualize you know? that way yes that's why it's practice like we important like how to you know this is called creation stage yeah? Mm -hmm. generation stage means like even we chant this uh, sadhana so we're doing this package long sadhana or uh, mostly has one by one you know it's uh, it's this package that comes like 
one by one visualize layer by layer yeah yes and you have to be able so if you don't have much time just think about where we live it's like houses like always like think about the palace you don't this palace you know and if this place is like visualize like buddha's pure lane see when we take this you don't the first beginning so that is a starting for for the meditation so that that is going transforming that's what is like purifying almost so baba is like all this phenomena is transformed into the emptiness like this right now we have this impure perception is all is become put into the fire okay Impure perceptions we burned almost so bad. Hida some of them so bad. Hida ham destroyed no more. So then create pure perceptions again. So arise lotus flower. Then top the syllables like you know it's that's all is creating then pure perception. Fact is the yadam that is must be create pure perception have to do the follow you know it's really perfectly done the practice yadam that the practice create pure perception. Okay. Yeah. Kenpo. I have uh, a comment for A. No, no, wait a minute. Um, <laughs> okay. Kenpo, uh, yes. can you, is it possible to, for you to provide a guided deity, yidam, deity yoga meditation? Like, yes. So this is the guideline, this one. Right now. Okay. Yes, right now. This is, this is stage is a guideline. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the best actually, like short, not too long. It's giving like all information here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now it's a Karim. Karim? Yeah. So I was watching the empowerment on, I was watching empowerment that Garchin Rinpoche did, and there were teachings before, and she was talking about empowerment, right? And the way she described, well, I'm, he talked about it too in Tibetan, and then the translator was a woman. So she was describing what he said as, um, this is my interpretation. When you do an empowerment, it's like a, a light, like it washes the light inside of you. So the Buddha, ne Buddha nature becomes purified at the empowerment. Every time you do an empowerment, it's like you're giving a shower to your Buddha nature and purifying the karma. So even if the karma hasn't ripened, because you're doing the empowerment, you're able to purify that karma without going through the ripening. So it was like, I thought that every time he did an empowerment, that I should be um, present, if I could be present, because not only does it help to develop the ripening karma, but at the same time, you're purifying and burning away karma that's there. And maybe then you don't have to go through all of the uh, phenomena that would be associated with the ripening of it. So the empowerment, okay, I thought, yeah. was very important. Mm. The so empowerment is introducing, introducing the, the natural mind introduce via buddha mm -hmm. yes okay so yeah purify empowerment is can be purify you know purify our karma and uh, purification so different method Kempo, different method yes Kempo, you are talking that you are actually giving us the empowerment and talking about the yidam deity so if that's the case, can I practice Yidam Tiriti? Because I never got the empowerment of Yidam Tiriti. So if you are giving us now, then can I practice Yidam Tiriti? Or no, I have to find a teacher to get. You can, you can practice Yidam Tiriti, yes, of course you can. So we already talked oh. like auto oh. level, inner level, security level. You are practicing Yadam Deity. If you meditate actually Maha Mudra, then you really practice the inner secret level practice Yadam Deity. Truth, truth, reality, truth, Yadam Deity practicing. So Kempo, then, 
some oh, yes so is there's an understanding of lots of people have that some deities require an empowerment before they practice and some don't always require it you know that they're there at the sutra level like medicine buddha or chen rezi so i think the, that this sangha person is worried that actually, she's gonna practice okay. the jidam without actually the actually this that is required to have empowerment but without that still you can practice it's, it's required yes it's required because like you have empowerment it's like giving someone like you know authority to do and introduce you so who practice yidam that is they give you this like you know power like you know authority to do and the things that is great but then this is not the same as like usually we worldly thinking you know it's a uh, even without empower you can practice yes if you really understanding the reality the what means yadam deity still you can practice if you don't know the yadam deity what means then even without empowerment who who are you going to practice you don't understand empowerment is actually the introducing what means yadam deity how to practice Hello? Someone, can you mute someone? It's like it's big grown, it's going on lots of noisy. So, who asks questions? Like, can you please unmute? Um, can I ask you a question from back from the beginning of today? Yes. The syllables that are for the um, elements, the one, the sum, sum sometimes means the number three, right? What? No, no, sum. This is a sum. The sum and the sum is like different, the, the diff, similar pronunciation, but it's uh, uh, the spelling is different. Oh, <laughs> and so, and it means earth? It means earth? Could be, yeah, earth. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm. Okay, so no questions, right? Simple, can I ask a, a quick clarification process or question? Yes, yes, please. When we were talking about merit, this is really profound that you, when you said this, uh, it is profound and I forget to do this. Um, so when we dedicate our merit, for for the benefit of all beings. Um, am I understanding this correctly? It's important to realize that subject object does not exist. So there are no expectations. So no expectations of Buddhahood. Uh, we realize emptiness and we're dedicating our merit for all beings. Is that correct? So that is a realization dedication. Like we usually we chant end of the prayer is a Manjushri, Samanda Bada, all that dedicate, we're going to do the same that dedication, right? So that means like we 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 our dedication is usually is like subject and object. We don't have that realization. That's why we really hard to dedication like without the subject and object actions. So that's why whatever Majushiri Samanda Bada does, like exactly I do my dedication for what they did, my dedication, same like that. So that is the way this sub, uh, our accumulation, Mary is taking into the accumulation, Mary with wisdom, dedication. Right. Okay, and so until until we get that realization, can we just we, can we just visualize and like you said, so visualize that there's emptiness, kind of intellectually have a, have this understanding. So and it's uh, okay. Like when we have realized, then we not nothing is visualized. Like dharma da mm -hmm. ah, like into natural state. So you realize it just all is like Buddha. Everything is empty. You know, 
what we told absolute truth, like just that, that natural state, and then that is dedication. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, that's very important. See, dedication has a major series, some and the body, and we, we do every time, right? That same thing is the why is it that we follow them is like we cannot dedicate us what they can do. The reason is we don't have a realization. Without a realization, we cannot dedicate like merit is like with wisdom realize no subject no object no actions so then manjushiri has that realization so that's why we follow him okay thank you that's your question or yeah that, that's it thank you thank you so okay, you you're welcome question? yes if we know there's the ground and then there's two paths and one path is leading us to that purity, why do we need to make all these uh, prayers of protection against like filthy things and uh, perverse things? Because I think that I would think if we're on the true path and we are going there, we need not fear those things because we would know they can't change us or harm us or touch us. So you mean we on the path, like we're taking like one ground, the true path. So you mean we're going to right path? Yes. No one apart. So you mean we no need to protect me? No, I'm just wondering why we need to make the prayers to be um, keep those things away from us. Shouldn't we be confident that even if we were to contact, I don't know how they would define something that's filthy, but um, you know, there's there are lots of people like homeless people that need help and they do get help and they would be considered filthy. But shouldn't we be confident going down the right path that even if we come into contact with somebody or something that might be filthy or perverse or tries to subject us to that, that we're not going to wander off of the path because those things are not real? Sorry, but I really didn't get your question. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> Who got it? Like, give me some uh, main point. What did Lida talked? Kempo, I, um, I think I understood her to say that you're doing your practice and why do we need to do um, prayers for protection? And I think the answer is, you know, there's samsara and it has to do with not what's outside of us, but maybe um, uh, just um, illusions in our mind. Is that right, Lisa? Well, I think it sort of is, but um, I guess, I would have to take more of a defined answer of what, how do, how are things that are filthy defined? How are things uh, that are perverse defined? Because um, I I had to learn early on about balancing compassion with wisdom, but I'm not talking about spiritual wisdom. I'm talking about just being smart because. There's been times when I would help somebody that somebody would say like, oh, well, why would you help that person? Because they're, you know, they're a degenerate or they're, they're dirty or they're, and you could get yourself harmed by helping that person. But so, yes, I did need to learn to balance wisdom and say, okay, that looks like it could be a dangerous situation. So I'm not going to go into it. But what I'm saying is I don't know why we need to, recite the prayers if we're already on this this path and we know that those things are not real and you know shouldn't we move away from judging things uh, who you know who determines what is what's filthy uh, you know all these other kinds of things these terminologies that we use when we're praying 
who, who determines that? How is that decided? And if it's all only um, real on the relative level, is it even important? Okay, so <laughs> I uh, didn't get it. I, like, you know, main point. Sorry about that. Yes. I, I think, um, Lisa, if I'm understanding, that what you're saying is, especially today in the teaching, we were talking about that we are transforming impure objects into pure objects. So why do we say prayers to get rid of the impure objects? Well, we're actually trying to um, have the impure objects as being part of our practice to bring them and create purity, and to look at them, transform them into uh, not viewing them as something impure. That's a very good way to put it. That's a little bit closer, yes. So impure is not why we get rid of it, like just take to the human practice? Well, for example, even like if we look at the Achi prayer, like a lot of the uh, smoke offerings, they're talking about filthy things and, you know, trying mm. to purify all of those, those mm. different actions, you know, um, through the, the offering of smoke, through the smoke offering, you know. Mm. So I guess, why are we praying okay, to get so, rid of those things? Is that correct, Lisa? Uh, yeah, better, that's, that's a good, yes. Actually, today this is talking about a really, really high level, you know, in the going into the practice. Like we, this, uh, like we are in the the strong perception of relativity, and uh, I think so. This practice is like so deeper level, like kind of like too much. You know how to say the uh, kind of a uh, how to call this like distinctions like we don't really get understand it so many different levels practicing so many different levels practices so we all using different ways this is the different method so why we have to do this why we don't have to do that means like why does everything has to follow by different situations at different levels of individual practice Thank you. Oh, I can't hear you now. Yeah. So I couldn't hear I part of it. Uh, so we have like example, all is the kids, then someone created like, okay, one day like, one parent bring like big, big clothes, like either people's clothes. Mm -hmm. So then this kid says, why you bring this one? We ne never no need this, like I can, too big for me, I don't need this, you know, like, why we don't just, like, you know, uh, need these things, mm -hmm. why we need, because they don't thinking about it, like, when one day they get, get <laughs> bigger. <laughs> bigger and like, oh no, you know, either. So like, like that kind of thinking, you know. I think so. Um, so it has a graduate, mine, mine is a graduate, take this as a graduate. I think that's the word correctly, you know, like just progressing, changing, you know, levels. Okay. Thank Kimbo. You. Kimbo. Yes. One more question. Mm. When you said that this is a very high level, the secret thing is very high level, but you still try to explain it to us, like there's no, 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 here, no, there, no, no, object, no subject, no, all this. So when we were trying to meditate on it, so we have to get with all the conceptual idea, isn't it? Yes, yes. So when we get rid of all the conceptual idea, is it eventually we see the emptiness? Yes. So we, when we see the emptiness, then we see the, nat the nature of the mind, then we uh, uh, achieve the Mahamudra, isn't it? Yes, then achieve the enlightenment, Buddhahood. Okay, so that's still step by step we can achieve that. So yes, even yes. though it's a, 
very difficult. Even it's very high teaching and it's very secret and it's no conceptual. But mainly when we practice, we get rid of all the conceptual idea, me, he, she, here and there, past and future, and all these just like burn fire, burn them all out, and then we will eventually see the nature of mind, isn't it? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're good to understand, yes. Thank you, Miss. Um, in a way, that was kind of what I was trying to go for is that the, these things that where we talk about are conceptual things. So why do we need to pr pray for protection against them if we're going down the right path? Uh, but mm. I, I think um, you put, a, by using the word conceptual, you put a better word on it. So thank you. Okay. So no, we no question, yeah. Today questions are really, really deep questions. Are harder to give answers. <laughs> we perform the deep questions. So now we meditate a little short together. Short meditation together. Yes, you you have question, Ro? No, because of your teachings, I say that we are gradually learning. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so meditate uh, the P of a question. And uh, first, just think about where we are. This place is like Buddha Amitabha Pyolain. Even you don't think about the Ram, Yam, Lam, these syllables. Just directly think about all visualize this where we are this place is Buddha Amitabha Pure Lane and then you think about where is your live the house is Buddha Amitabha Palace and then yourself is visualize Buddha Amitabha so we meditate that
Chair and roll, can you chant please this prayer? Yes. Yes. Of course. Thank you. A maho in the center is the marvelous Buddha, Mitama, boundless light. On the right side is the Lord of great compassion. On the left is Vajrapani, the Lord of powerful means. All are surrounded, surrounded by the limitless Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Immeasurable peace and happiness is the blissful, pure land of Dewashen. When I and all beings pass from samsara, may we be born there without taking samsara birth. May I have the blessing of meeting Amitabha face to face. By the power of the blessings of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, May we attain this aspiration without hindrance. Te gata pensadriya awa boda naya soha. Bodhicitta, the excellent and precious mind. Where it is unborn, may it arise. Where it is born, may it not decline, but ever increase higher and higher. By this virtue, may I attain omniscience. By defeating all enemies, confusion, May then all who travel on the waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death cross the ocean of samsara. As Manushi, the warrior, realized the ultimate state, and as did Samantabhadra, I will follow in their path and fully dedicate all the merit for all sentient beings. May the teachings of the great Rikumpa, Ratna Shri, who is omniscient, Lord of the Dharma, master of interdependence, Continue and increase with study, practice, contemplation, and meditation until the end of samsara. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, so see you tomorrow, nine o'clock. Thank you, Kempo. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you Thank so you, much. Thank you, Thank you, Kempo. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, you. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.